everyone, it's Pat and Frankie from Engine Power. Today we're going to go over another subject we get a lot of questions on, but we are going to shed a little light on how to do it right. We're talking choosing, setting up, and installing valve, valve springs. springs. Like Pat said, this is a topic that we get a lot of questions about because it can be kind of confusing if you're just starting out. So we wanted to cover it a little in depth so that you guys can tackle this process when you're building your next engine. Big thing about valve springs is that there's a lot of options and you try to figure out what you need for your application. And whether you're picking a spring or there's a spring that is recommended for the cam you're running, you need to make sure that it's right for the application. Just because a spring is specced out with a cam doesn't mean it's gonna be right when you put it in your engine. There's a lot of other factors that play into the spring pressure needed, whether it's valve size, clearances, rocker arm, geometry, all of that stuff needs to be accounted for when you're building your engine. And it also depends on the valve spring type, the cylinder head type, and the type of engine. So there's a lot of factors. We're gonna break it down, give you the basics, so that when you're doing this next time you're building your engine, you have a little confidence to tackle it yourself. So let's start with the types of valve springs. There's plenty of different constructions nowadays. Starting out with the basics, we have a single coil valve spring. This a lot of times is used in old school and new school OE stuff, very pretty much low high performance or stock applications. We have dual valve springs in both the hydraulic roller and solid roller variety. And the spring pressure is just like any other spring determined by the size of the coil and the size of the spring. Now recently there have been modern advancements in springs on both the OE and aftermarket level and there's two different designs that have really become very prevalent. The first is a beehive and this, like the name, kind of looks like a beehive. You see how it kind of tapers towards the top but it's a very nice gentle slope and then we have a conical and this is more of a straight taper as it goes from the bottom to the top and the main idea with both of these is to reduce the mass of the part of the spring that moves the most which is the top and the retainer so the beehive obviously has a very small retainer on it and with a conical spring it reduces not only the retainer diameter and mass but also the top half of the spring because this is the part that's moving the most so when we talk about springs we have dimensionally their sizes and specs and they have to actually fit the cylinder head you're working on but we also have the spring rate and we have the pressures that we are going to rate them by so the two ones that we always talk about are the seat pressure and the open pressure so the seat pressure is the pressure of the valve spring when it's installed and the valve is sealed against the seat so this is called installed height or installed pressure or seat pressure we also have open pressure, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is the pressure that the spring's applying when the valve is all the way open. So the max lift for your application. So that can vary depending on what you're doing. So what do you need for seat and open pressures? That also varies by application. And the big way that it changes is the type of lifter because this changes not only what the lifter can take, but the cam profile itself. Starting out with the basics, we'll start with hydraulic flat tappet lifters. Generally, we wanna see these under 115 pounds of seat pressure, and we usually don't want to exceed 300 pounds of open pressure on that application. For a solid flat tappet lifter, these can get a little bit spicier. We usually target for around 130 for most applications on the seat pressure, but you can go a little bit higher than that with some certain specialty parts, like if you have a larger diameter lifter or an EDM lifter or something like that, these can creep up into the 150, 160 pound range once the engine is broken in. For those for open pressure, these can be as high as about 400 pounds, but they usually don't exceed that just because of the design of the lifter. Moving on, we have hydraulic roller lifters, and these can vary a little bit depending on the size of the components used. For small block applications, we generally shoot for around 125 to 145 pounds of seat and under 400 pounds open. For big block applications, these can go a little bit higher to up to about 165 pounds of seat pressure and in the 450 pound range for open. When we start talking about solid roller lifters, this is where the spring pressures can get really, really big depending on the application and the RPM and the camshaft being used. So for solid roller, small block stuff, and this is domestic V8s in particular, we generally see between 200 and 240 pounds on the seat, and we generally see between 600 and 700 pounds open. For big block stuff, you can get really crazy on spring pressure, but usually we're seeing between 270 and 300 on the seat, 
and between 700 and 900 or above pounds of open pressure. Now that you're armed with all of that great information, it's time to work on how to get it on the cylinder head. There's a bunch of different options on how to do this, whether the head is on the bench like this one, or it is still in the vehicle, which is quite challenging, but still doable. We're gonna start with the head on the bench. Several different options on valve spring compressors. That's what it does. You have to compress the spring, take the keeper out of the retainer, and then the spring will come off. Several different ways to do that, from the affordable to, oh my God, I have to go sell something. This is the first one, which is a manual compressor. This works under mechanical leverage. We have this mechanism that pulls back, puts it in, gets the spring, and you can adjust the height with this handle here. And then you push this in, and that will compress the spring as this is touching the valve. Very, very easy and quite affordable, as a matter of fact. They have limitations on the rate of spring that they can compress, but good for most hot rod applications. Moving on to the next one, which is a little bit more serious. This is basically a C-clamp, and it has a handle that turns the screw. This goes on the valve side. This goes over the spring side. This has several different ones that you can put on, depending on the keeper and retainer size itself. So same thing, easy to use, but a little bit more expensive than our base one. Then you get up to something that is very expensive, but if you do a lot of them, it is a necessity. This is pneumatically powered and it can compress any spring pretty much you can throw at it. It can compress ones as high as 1,400 pounds of open pressure. So very, very handy. If you're changing the valve springs in the vehicle, there are several different options as well. The first one works with stud mounted rocker arms. You'll pull the actual poly lock off, put that over the rocker stud, put it back down, and then use mechanical leverage on the handle, and this part will compress the spring. But there are also ones that are specially specific for the vehicle. For instance, this one is to do a Gen 3 Hemi. This one is for an LS setup. And there are ones for coyotes and imports and things like that. So there's a lot of different options to remove the spring. Now, obviously, if you take them off, you can reinstall them with the same tooling. You just do it in the reverse order. Here's a pro tip. If you are doing this in the vehicle, it is advisable to pull the rocker arms off, put the piston at top dead center, and put air to the cylinder. That way, when you're working on this, the valve is held by air pressure. And even if the air pressure goes away, the valve cannot fall in the cylinder because if it's at BDC or bottom dead center, if you have a valve go into a cylinder, you're pulling the cylinder out anyway. Yeah, and that, not a good time. So what we're gonna do next is show you an example of how to take one off and how to properly measure it because the next thing we're gonna do is set up our valve springs. So we're gonna use our air one. We pretty much use this on everything because we set up every single cylinder head and valve spring here in engine power. So basically like Pat was saying, we screw it over. The plunger on the back is depressed against the valve. Get this centered up on the retainer and then start applying pressure. Sometimes uh, you have to give them a little bit of a bump, that way it unseats the retainer. So you just give them a, one of those. Depress it enough where you can get the locks out. Like that, don't drop these. If you need to, you can use a magnet to grab them. And then we relieve the pressure all the way. And then we can slide our valve spring off. Now something to note is that this is a common misconception, but the valve locks have a groove in them and there's a groove in the valve stem. That groove does not actually hold the retainer in place. All that does is locate the valve locks and the retainer itself. What actually holds the retainer against the valve is the angle of the locks and the retainer and the pressure of the valve spring. It makes it bite basically into the stem of the valve and that's what holds it. So when we're talking about measuring the spring, what we're talking about is measuring the installed height of the spring. And that is the dimension of the spring when it's compressed, when it's installed and the valve is against the seat. So how do we measure that? Well, we use a dedicated tool called a valve height mic or a valve spring micrometer. These are specialized tools. There's a bunch of different sizes and dimensions depending on what you're measuring. We have one that's for an LS. We have one that's for conventional. We have one that's for another set of conventional for a different retainer. The big thing here is that it fits the retainer properly to get the correct measurement. So for this cylinder head, we're gonna use this one here. And when you're doing this, you have to keep in mind that there are other things that affect the spring 
height when it's installed. Namely, if you have a locator or shims underneath the spring. So the locator can either locate the spring on the inside or the outside. This is an outside locator. And then there will be shims underneath if you're setting it up for the proper spring pressure, there will be a shim or multiple shims of varying thickness in order to get that height where you want it. So those have to be in place to get an accurate measurement if you're trying to set up your springs. So what we do is we take our mic, put it over the valve stem like that, make sure the valve's all the way closed. We will use the retainer for that valve and put it over. And then we'll use a pair of valve locks, slip those back in like that, and once you get them on, you can take the mic and the retainer, slide it up against it, apply pressure, and then we will screw the mic out, basically. So this one reads between one inch six hundred thousandths and two inch two hundred thousandths, and it does it in five thousandths increments. And so what we'll do is we'll screw it out, put some pressure on it, and then use the reading on the side to get our installed height. So this one right now is at one inch, 931 thousandths of an inch. And we'll, what we'll do is we'll write that number down, we'll make note of it, and we will measure each valve individually with all of its respective components. And then we can take that number and use it to figure out what the spring pressure is gonna be at seat and at open. So that's what Pat's gonna show you now. We are now to the point where we can check the spring's seat and open pressure and verify the spring's rate. And we'll get to that in a second to tell you what that is. There's several levels of affordability in doing this. You can pick up one of these, and this is something that you can use in a bench vise. The spring goes between here and the jaws of the actual vise. So what we'll do then is compress it to its installed height and read its poundage, and that will be the seat pressure. And then, because we know our cams lift, or we should, and we do, we are gonna compress it down to its max lift and then read the pounds again, and that gives us our seat and open pressures. This is a relatively economical way of doing it, but if we do a lot of them like us, we check every spring on every head that we run, we have a dedicated bench-mounted operation. So what we're gonna do is now set up our spring tester with the height that we measured, and we are gonna check our seat and open pressure. And again, we're gonna check the rate as well. That's relatively easy to do. We'll turn this on, and we're gonna get our mic out to what was measured, which was 1931. And this machine has stops, which at the top here, these are both for seat and open. They are adjustable. So we're gonna set this in, and we're gonna run this up for our installed height for our seat. It's a little magnet in there. And what we do is you don't want to put too much pressure on this because you can get a false reading. You just want to barely be on there at its stop. I already preset that one. So you can see that this is at zero, but if I get all crazy with it, I can put pressure on it. So what we're trying to do is just get it to where it is barely on and barely touching. And that's our mark. So we know that our cam lift is 672 thousandths. On the back side of here, there is a height mic, which we can zero out. And then we can take this out and actually run down on that height mic to 672 thousandths. Like that. So now that is our max lift and that will give us our open pressure. So since we're all set up, now we can very quickly check our springs. Remember, when it's a dual spring, you have to have the retainer because the retainer has a step in it because the springs are different lengths. So they have to be, the, the main outer spring goes onto that and the inner spring goes onto, onto this other ledge. On a triple spring, they'll actually have three steps in it sometimes. So you have to make sure that you're using the retainer when you have a double spring. On a single wound spring, you just put the spring in itself and it will work. That's what we're gonna do. Come down and compress it down. This spring has 142 pounds of pressure on the seat. And then we'll switch over and we'll compress it all the way so the other stop, and it has 417 pounds of open pressure. And that's not bad because that's right in the range of where our hydraulic roller is. Actually, we were gonna make it a little bit more than that, so how do you change that? Well, we can put shims under the spring cup in various thicknesses, and we can check to see what that does. We can vary the 
the actual seat and open pressure by how much shim is, and that varies with spring rate. The spring's rate is a change in force in pounds over a change in distance in inches as the spring is compressed. We can calculate the spring's rate by subtracting our seat pressure from our open pressure and then divide that value by our max lift in inches. This will give you the amount of force the spring increases every inch that it is compressed. And once you know the spring's actual rate, you can easily do the math to determine how much shim is needed to achieve the pressures you want. Now I know this was a lot of information that we just threw at you, but this is kind of just the basics to get you started and hopefully it gives you the confidence to tackle this operation on your next engine build. Yeah, so like, subscribe and hit that notification bell because we're gonna do a few more of these. Yeah, so comment below what tech topic you wanna see us cover next time.